On Coop, this is another modified rapid strike. This is a Dahmer replica as a commission, meaning somebody paid for it. Um, so in this video, I'll go over the internal mods, the paint shop, and show you firing as always. So starting with the internal modifications of the rapid strike, I haven't done anything original. I've taken out the thermistor, the electronic and mechanical locks, re-lubricated everything, and also rewired it to a 2x2 two two AA um, harness. I typically just run AA to C converters in the stock battery tray, however I also needed to house the swarm fire batteries in the blaster. I did not want to do external stuff because it's slightly sloppier and more vulnerable, even though I have two guns on the outside, which is kind of funny. But I have both battery harnesses within the stock area. I'm running three trust fires plus one dummy battery because these are the stock motors. The performance is pretty good, um, just as well as every other modified rapid strike, which is pretty nice when you voltage ramp them. That's all with the rapid strike, super happy with that. I've done it a dozen times, so I don't really think I need to go over that any further. But the cool part about this blaster is the two integrated swarm fires. The swarm fires are traditionally very, very long, very bulky blasters, but they have all of their internals housed in this internal, internal set, which is pretty cool, um, which is glued to the in-strike rail of the rapid strike. So this is not actually glued to the shell itself, which makes it appear cleaner, and if you need to take it off for maintenance or whatever, it's very easy. Um, and it's also uh, solder welded, JD welded, and super glued to the um, in-strike rail, so it's pretty stable. And then I also have two bolts in the back here controlling the tail end, just in case the force hits it in the back so it doesn't lever action off and snap. So the integration is very stable. This is the same method I used in the last Dahmer, which is why I'm sort of flowing through this video. It is a replica, so much of the uh, modification process is identical. Neither of these swarm fires are modified. I did not want to increase the spring power because that would slow down the rate of fire, and I did not want to take out the air restrictor because you're very often dry firing one when you're firing the other. They are wired in parallel off of the same switch, so you cannot fire just one or the other. It's both of them or neither of them, which I think is cool because it's more badass that way. However, that means you could have one loaded and one not, so if you take out the air restrictor and you're constantly dry firing a springer, you could break the plunger tube or other internals, which would not be cool. So leading in the air restrictor protects the blaster. Both swarm fires, again, are wired in parallel to a 2x2 AA holder, which is four AA's. Um, I'm running trust fires, which I recommend to the user. This is a client's gun, so not mine. Um, and it's also housed next to the rapid strike. It is two separate circuits, so you can fire this one and the rapid strike independently. The switch for the swarm fires is in the same location as the original Dahmer, which is located here. This is a momentary switch I picked up from Radio Shack, which is screwed into the shell, so it's very stable. Um, it's off in the default position, and then once you touch it, it turns on and then it turns off right when you take your finger off. That's instead of a toggle switch, a momentary switch is ideal because you don't want to have it toggled on. You drop the gun and it's just firing. In sentry mode, I guess that would be pretty cool, but that might lead to errors if you accidentally turn it on when you're not trying to fire. That's it with the modifications. If you've noticed this paint job is very similar to a previous blaster, it's because it's the same paint job. It's actually the same client as the person who paid for the Rapid Strike strong arm integration, which just shipped out today. Um, this is a black primer, a black vinyl dye primer, and then I have a gray, dark shadow gray base coat with Krylon red and then Krylon silver um, details. And of course I finished it up with a matte clear coat, which I'm pretty happy with, um, the, the overall paint job that is. It looks very similar because it's supposed to look the same. Both of his guns are going to match each other now, which will look sweet. And up here is a flashlight attachment. I have a tutorial on how to make one of these. It's just an in strike clip with a zip tied flashlight um, for tacticalness or whatever. And that just clips onto the rail so you can turn it on and then see where you're shooting people, I guess. So yep, yeah, now I'll show you blaster firing. <laughs> The swarm fires are firing stock ranges because they haven't actually modified them other than rate of fire and changing the rate of fire does not increase their range, just their rate of fire. Um, the rapid strike is shooting just as far as other um, voltage ramped uh, rapid strikes are shooting, which is pretty far, much further than in stock form because those flywheels are spinning a whole lot faster and it also increases the rate of fire by upgrading the voltage of the pusher mech. So yeah, that's it. Very happy with the Donner replica. I like it just as much as the original. I think the paint's really cool, very different, um, or different than the last one. Questions or comments are welcome in the comment section. Um, thanks for watching.